These are my classic dresses that I make. I make them within an hour. It will take you a little bit longer if you're a beginner um, and also if you've never uh, followed the, uh, the technique that I'm going to share with you today. So I'm using the same numbers that I always do, hips 40, bust 40 and waist 34. That works for me. And my armhole measurement comes at 18 inches when it's tight. So for a dress, I use 18 inches. When I make things like the jacket, I go a bit looser, so it came up to 20. My shoulders are, again, I'm quite um, straight shouldered. I have a, a very small drop. You might find you've got a, a you know, slope your shoulders. You might be even stricter than I am. So you've got to remember that this design might work for you, but then you need to tweak things. So don't be frightened of making a couple, seeing how they work for you, and then adapting. We're not going to do all the technical sums. We just don't even want to go there. I have read books, oodles and oodles of books, where we go into so many formulae. Now, yes, when I was doing engineering, and yes, when we're dealing with oil and gas, yes, you need to be accurate. When we're making a dress, no. We don't need to worry too much. So let's just get down to making some clothes that look good on us, that fit as well and make us happy. I've got two straight lines here. That's the roll, um, paper come off the roll, but I need to draw a straight line at the top here. And this straight li line, this straight line is going to be where I start creating my pattern. Okay, I always work on the back piece first. My back neck drops one inch. So line that up and I drop it one inch and I bring it out three inches. This is a stretch fabric top, but generally I do this anyway on a, um, a woven. And the reason is because I always put facing on my necklines. So that's my neckline. And there's my curve. If you're not comfortable doing that, then get a French curve. They've, they're reasonable. They're, I think I picked mine up for about two or three pounds off Amazon. So then we're going to do the shoulder. Now, my shoulder is average and it drops. I'm going to drop it at four inches. So about four inches there. I'm going to drop it one and a half inches. Make it four inches long. And that takes me to about there. Okay. So it's all changed a little bit. And I need to bring this down to my bust line. Now I've measured my armhole. My armhole measured at 20 inches. The 20 inches split into two for the front and the back gives me 10 inches. The 10 inches plus I'm going to add um, half an inch for seam allowance. I'm going to make it down to ten and a half inches. Now for a stretch fabric that might be quite long because you do get some stretch. So I could leave it at ten if I wanted to, which I might do actually. I'm going to leave it at ten. So that's measured from your shoulder down to ten. Not from uh, the drop but actual the top there. So let's leave it at ten. That armhole measurement gives me the base, the basis of my bust line. And my bust was 40 inches. So a quarter of 40 brings me to 10. So let's draw that line up to 10. And then I'm going to add one inch for comfort. So all in all, I end up with four inches around my whole body. And then I'm going to add half an inch for seam allowance. So that brings me to 11 and a half inches. So I'll draw that in here. Again, I'm going to make sure that's lined up there. And then I'm going to draw my armhole. Now the armhole, I want it to be coming quite low. I'm going to bring this in at 45 degree angle. So let's do one and a half inches. So that gives me one and a half inches. So I'll use a French curve. Now the French curve is going to help me get a nice straight line there and also start off with a straight line there. But 
I need to bring it out to there. So let's bring it there. So if I follow that about there, oops, moving it around quite a lot there. There we go. And then finish it off like this. There's my sleeve. If you don't want to do it like that, so that's about halfway there and about mm, a third of the way there. If you don't want to do a complicated sleeve like that, you could just join it there to there and then you could end up with a triangular sleeve. If you go back and watch the top that we did, the jersey top we did, that was a really simple sleeve. Um, you can follow that method, but I want to introduce you to a more curved sleeve in this video. So there's my bust line. Now I need to drop down to my waistline. Again, it's an average, um, I'm taking this, I'm an average size 14. So I'm bringing it down eight inches to there. And if I use my ruler to give me a nice straight line there, I can bring this out. Now my waist is 34. So if I bring this out to 34, uh, a quarter of 34, what was that? That was eight and a half. So that's my eight and a half. But I need to add one inch for comfort and half an inch for seam allowance. That brings us out to 10. Okay, so here's my end here. That's going to join here. And then I'm going to come down nine inches for my hips. Now, on average, I think most of you might want to go eight. So come down eight inches for yourself. I'm actually going to bring it down nine. And again, this is going to be something that you've got to work out trial and error for you. You might find um, it's, it's, uh, you want to have uh, it come out more. So again, I'm going to bring it out to 10 because a quarter of 40 for my hips is 10. Add one inch for comfort, which gives me, again, four inches all the way around, and half an inch on each side, each piece, to give me a seam allowance. Now, and, oh, another curve. Just don't like these curves. So we need to get a nice curve going on all the way through. Um, well, how can we do this? So that's got to join to there, and then that's got to join to there. Tell you what, let's go for that. And then that to that. And then make it, rather than make it so severe, make it nice and natural. And then the same thing's gonna happen here we're curving this out because now what happens is once we've hit our hips, we're going down to streamline our legs down, aren't we? So you can now decide what you want to do at this point. Do you want a straight skirt? Carry on and make the dress as long as you want. If you want it like mine, I like mine at 36 inches, you'll come down to here at 36 inches from the top shoulder point okay always work from that top line that we created and that will give us the full length of the dress and then add your hem so if i draw it to 36 i'm going to go all the way across the paper and i'll show you why then add your hem here i'm going to label these up hip waist and bust and then that's your shoulder okay and
I'm going to put a mark there and a mark there. Now, this is the sleeve um, fold at the top. So I'm going to make sure I mark this as the shoulder. And I'm going to carry it on, on the same slope as the shoulder. There we go. Like that. And follow that at the same slope. Now I measured before a 22 inch arm, so I need to move this paper. Actually, let's make it three quarters. So normally I want I might want it 22 inches, so carry on up to 22. But actually, I'm going to stop at 18 and make it a three quarter length. And I need to make sure that I've got six inches at the elbow, so about midway to make sure I come up six inches it's a stretch fabric and I'm going to just match that with that and continue that shape on and come down level with the paper on there like that and I've marked the points at which the sleeve match so grab a piece of interfacing and this is a firm, fold it in half and then place it there for your neckline so you have it all copied along there and if you keep it as low as you can go, see because you might want a nice low neckline you see. Follow the pattern. Now I've got to do a video on interfacing because I believe some people think or are under the idea that you need two pairs of scissors, a separate pair for interfacing. Um, so I need to explain why you don't. You don't need a separate, separate pair of scissors for interfacing. Okay, but that's not for now. <laughs> so. I'm following this shape here. Okay. So when you've created your piece for the interfacing, I'm going to just bring that out a little bit shorter. There we go. You would do this. What you would do is you would draw your design on here open it out, make sure you're happy with it, or you could do it on paper first, so you're not wasting interfacing, if you're not sure of the design you want. Create your design on your interfacing. I need to find my pen. So create the design you want to. So that point there is where the back neck joins. So you don't really want to go beyond that back neck there. You want the shoulders to be the same there. Let's put a mark on it. So we want the shoulders to be the same because when we sew the front to the back, the shoulders have to be the same length. Okay. If you do want a wider neck, then create that back at the start when we created the pattern. So go wider and then draw the shoulder in. All right. So if I come down for the design that I'm wearing, if I come down three inches, actually I came down four inches and then mark it another two inches. What I did was at the four inches, I came out half an inch. I drew a V there, match it up to there. Bring this out. Bring that down again I don't want to go past that and then I drew a curve you can draw whatever shape you want if you are creative you can draw a zigzag you can keep it all circular and add lace in there you can do whatever you want so the creativity again is yours keep it simple around neck if you don't want to get too crazy 